Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how I colour my images from start to finish. Now I don't want to waste any time so I just want to jump straight into this tutorial so let's go. Okay now for this um, I already have the sketch laid out because in this I already want to focus on just the colouring of the image itself and to begin with I've sketched this out on toned paper. Now I'm using toned paper because I already just want to pick out the dark tones and light tones and then the tone paper itself will be acting as the middle tone. That, for the final image, if you see what images I create, it gives a real different look to the, to the whole image itself. And once I'm happy that the sketch is in place, I use this black pencil and the white pencil and I'm just highlighting all the areas, just working the dark tones first, as well as the light tones. This is going to be your base drawing, so later on when you actually come to applying the colour, you have a solid understanding of placements of the colour. So basically you want to go around the whole image, working in the whites and the blacks. Now before I go any further, I just want to describe the materials I'm using. So like I said before, I'm using a toned paper and the white and black faber Castell Polychroma pencil. All materials are list in the description, so if you want to go check them out and buy yourself some, you can just click right there. And here I'm going to be solely working on the cat for this face. Now, I've got the character looking right, but I'm having a light coming in from the right side too. So, I, like I said before, with the black pencil, I'm just going to be marking in all the areas I believe where the shadow is going to be falling. So, I'm just putting all the creases and dents around the eyes, as well as where the light is going to be hitting. And that's where the toned paper comes in amazing. So, with the white pencil, you just literally use that on the toned paper and it picks up all the light areas. It gives it such a different look to just plain white paper, so if you haven't tried toned paper before, experimenting and playing around with this medium is incredible and if you're into graffiti or an illustrated style, it can add so much more dimension than a plain piece of white paper. Now here I'm just going to speed things up a little bit because I'm just going to, like I said before, pick things up, pick the white tones up, the black tones too. And for this caterpillar design, I'm actually going to give it like a skull makeup effect over the face. So I'm going to use a heavy amount of white on the toned paper just to give it that skull makeup look. Obviously, if you're just doing like a character like a, a normal person with normal facial features, you'd be using the white and black just the same, with the same way and the same effect. And you can achieve so many different effects with the toned paper and these colours. And you can even sometimes leave your design finished there with the black and white with actually any colour and it still has a really good strong effect but obviously with this further on down the line I'm going to show you guys how to colour it okay now the face is complete I'm just going to work my way throughout the whole of the, the rest of the image I'm working my way through the body, the hands adding all the detail with the two tones the light and the dark um, yeah I'm just going to continue working the way through the image until I'm actually satisfied and you can spend as long as you want on this process obviously it's sped up here for me doing this in real time probably took about an hour and a half just working out the tones so I advise you to do the same just put all the tones in place where you can look at the image and go do you know what yeah I'm happy with that and once you finally set all the tones in place we can move straight onto the colouring part and it gets so much easier once you initially establish the key tones placed on your final image and if you're there thinking like I have no idea where to pick the tones the whites and the blacks that really comes down to a lot of practice. I've been drawing for a long time now and I still struggle sometimes to pit tones in the right place. So really just practice from real life. Look naturally how light hits certain objects. It helps so much when it comes down to drawing things illustrated style, to learn fundamentals in the real world and then collaborate that to more of a exaggerated illustrated style. And now once you feel happy enough that you've pit all the dark and light tones in the right place, we're now going to move on to the next step, which is actually adding colour to your image. And today the colour I'll be using is, um, is a Liquitex ink. It's a sap green colour. I'm going to use this throughout the whole of the capillary's body. And basically at the beginning, the thing I'm going to do is break it down into three colours. So I'm trying to keep this as simple as I can. We're going to create a dark tone, a mid tone and a light tone. There'll be a link in the description for all materials used. So that includes the inks I'm using today. And to create the three tones I'll be using, I'm just going to put some white in one of the pots with the green to create the light tone. 
Then I'll add some black to another pot with the green to create your dark tone and leave a pot with just a sap green. Now this will give you your three base tones for colouring in your image. Okay, now once we have our three colours mixed up, the dark, medium and light, this is where the toned image at the beginning comes into play. So now what we're looking to do is use the dark green to be placed where we place the dark tones. So basically where we use the black pencil the most. This is why it's so important to be on the base structure first because it makes this stage so much easier. So now I'm just going through the face with the dark green first, just picking up all the dark areas I want, just to highlight that specific area. As well as having the base colour, I also just have a plain white and plain black just left to one side. That's to really add the highest point of contrast to the image, which gives it a lot more dynamic shape. And obviously I'm just using the white here for the mask effect on the caterpillar. Also, like I said at the beginning, I wanted to have that skull effect. So just having a pure white layered over the white pencil just brings out that effect. And this is what's so great about using this toned paper, because you can do things like put the dark and light tones in and what we're doing here is just using the inks to go over where we first place those tones so basically this becomes a uh, painting by numbers so we just put the dark color we first mixed up over the black and we put the lightest color over the white and then with the mid tone you just want to use the middle tone and this is such an easy way to create really dynamic imagery just by planning each step instead of trying to take on a whole image from the very beginning start to finish and here's what's so good about watercolors is you can do effects like this this is called a wash basically what i'm doing is i'm using the middle tone with water applied on the brush also and washing that color over the caterpillar's face this allows me to color in a big surface area quickly just giving it a green tint instead of using the solid color by itself And the good thing is that once I've applied the wash of green, I can now use a dark tone of the green to pull out all the darker areas, as well as layer on top the lighter tones. And when doing this process, just remember just to take your time with everything. Obviously it's time lapsed here, but the whole picture itself I think took about eight hours to complete. And what I'm also doing is once layering over the colors once, I leave it to dry. And as you'll notice, the darker tones and the lighter tones don't dry to the original color when you first lay it on. So now I can reapply smaller touches of the darker areas to add a whole new dimension. So now you have a medium, a mid dark, and a final dark, which gives it so much more shape um, and holds the image so much better towards the end. So during the process you want to just go through a layering system of layer it with a color leave to dry and layer once more using the black and the whites just to pick up highlights and now i'm moving on to the body of the caterpillar and to give the body more of a texture the first thing i'm going to do is to add a wash to it so just wash the whole thing in the mid green with some water like i showed you before and then apply the lighter tone in certain areas to give it these like small triangles to show that it's raised so there's more of a texture on the body going on than just a flat green and then using a dab of the darker tone i'm just applying it through the cracks next to the white obviously that would be in shadow if the light's hitting from the right side of the caterpillar and now once i'm happy that the green for the caterpillar is in place i'm now just going to add some purple for the spikes that go across the spine of the caterpillar the whole reason I picked purple is because everyone knows that green and purple is such a nice solid colour combination. And once you start getting on the base shapes down, you can then just start adding a few details to add a bit more character. I'm just adding a few a few spots on the caterpillar itself, a few dark colours. And just remember just to have fun with it and get creative. Just don't take it too seriously and just enjoy the process. Next I'm going to get myself a new colour out. I'm going to get the colour yellow oxide which is also another ink. And I'm just going to use this colour to work on the belly. Now because the colour is close to the tonal paper itself, I'm actually going to use the tonal paper to act as a tone. So I'm going to use that yellow oxide along with a white pencil just to pick up the light. And once again after you've inked the whole image, you can then reapply the pencil even as well as other layers of ink. So I'm going to go over, over the lighter bits with the white pencil and also with the black pencil, shading in the darker areas as well as highlighting it with the white pencil again. This also gives it a whole another dimension of tone 
and texture. And now I'm literally just using the colors on my color palette to color in various aspects of the drawing. I'm just doing the smoke, finishing up the hands, the skull on the stick. And this is the final point where you can start adding more details. And we just go through your image and look, where you want to put the whites in and put in the blacks, just boost up the contrast and to give more of that dynamic look, just keep going with it. And like I said, as well as enjoy the whole process of creating something cool. And the tonal paper, as you can see, just gives that amazing look. I really enjoy using the tonal paper and um, as soon as I've got introduced to it, it beats over the white paper any day. Okay, now we're coming to the very end of this tutorial. I hope uh, you guys learned a lot. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask in the comment section. And like I said before, all materials will be listed in the description. So if you want to go check that out, you can. Um, and it means a lot to me if you guys subscribe and have you on board. Um, so yeah, this is basically how I would colour an image from start to finish. I hope you enjoyed and take care.